Hello Internet, so nice to see you! One of the holy grails of playing lead guitar is to learn how to be endlessly creative with it, learning how to play something different every time. The problem here is that we don't want to learn a new thing every time. I mean, it's cool and fun to learn new things, but if we had to learn a new technique for every solo that we play, we'll never stop practicing, and every now and then we would like to stop practicing and actually make some music. So the solution is, instead, to take some of the things we know already and remix them in a different way. So use techniques that we already know put together in a different way. Today we are going to see how a simple thing like a triad arpeggio can give us hundreds and hundreds of possibilities when we solo, and this just using the note of that triad arpeggio. We are not going out of the notes of the arpeggio. What follows is a fragment of a masterclass I gave to some of my online students. You're gonna see me react to the audience every now and then. I do recommend to watch this video from beginning to end and possibly to follow along with your guitar, otherwise you may lose the train of thought in what I explain. Here we go. Let's start breaking up a little bit those triads, okay? So far we play them up and down, but there must be more than this, right? It must be. Otherwise, what is the point of doing a long masterclass on this? Yes, guy, none of these girls, it's a real guitar player. Da, welcome to the internet. I mean, I really need to say that. It's gonna get worse when you see the next ones, but anyway, no way. <laughs> if we could only play those triads one way, there would be nothing to be happy about, okay? I post a, a, a photo, a picture of a happy girl, so there must be something more. Okay, now, you guys know me, I have a certain systematic approach to things, okay? So, please don't be scared from the, by the next slides, okay? Think of them as possible options. We start this way. So. The triad has three notes, the way we play right now, okay? There are six ways, six different orders in which we can play the six notes. So, and I give them numbers just because there's nothing uh, official about those numbers, okay? Just, just a way to remember them. So order number one is just playing the triad down. Order number two is this. Order number three. Order number four. Order number five going up. And order number six. So where before we were playing only the triads up and down, now we can play any one of those possible patterns, okay? And um, and combine them however we want. So for instance, I can use only pattern two and play all the triads using pattern two. Sounds a bit less <clears throat> stilted than before. Still, it's a bit, a lot of the same thing, but it's good. But then why using only one pattern? Why can't I use three of them? <laughs> okay, I can put them in any order. Right now, I'm using those three and I repeat in those three, but I can, I can do literally whatever I want. Uh, this is a bit harder to play and it sounds this way. Okay, again, you can play a bit fast and loose with the rhythm, speed up, slow down, put some accent, play it in quadruplets other than in triplets so that the triads don't start on the downbeat. You can do whatever you want. This is a bit harder, again, to play technically, but that's why we are doing this. Now, meaning we want to break out of just playing the triads up and down because, again, the main problem when people learn triad pairs is that now they sound like arpeggiators, they just blah, 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 all the time, okay? Up and down, up and down. This helps you be more melodic, okay? Now, there are, as you see, six possible ways to play this, okay? But, if we alternate two of the six patterns, I have 30 possible combinations. I can use pattern one and then pattern two, or pattern one and then pattern three, or pattern one and then pattern four. I'm not going to read all of them. Okay, this seems a lot like mathematics. It is, okay, but uh, <laughs> it's very useful when you're practicing. 
you just you just take the two pattern the two two patterns you follow this you play all the possible two patterns so for instance use pattern one on the g triads and pattern two on the f triads going up and down okay and then or, or pattern one on the g triad and pattern three on the f triad and so on and so forth okay and those are all the possible combinations you can use it may take a while to go through all of them okay it's not something you do in a single practice session but using these, you can play something different every practice session. And believe me, it's really, really, really useful for your technique and for mu your musicality. This is if you use two patterns. What if you use three patterns? <laughs> so we alternate between three patterns. Okay. If you use three patterns, uh, allowing only single repetitions, you have 210 possible combinations. Up to you. To figure them out. How many options are for five months arpeggio? Oh, sky's the limit, guys. Every time you add a note or a combination, the number explode. <laughs> okay. Again, important thing here, very important thing here. You should not think of those as exercises that you should and you must absolutely practice. You should not think of this as something that if you don't play all the combinations, then you are somehow inferior or you're not doing your homework. That's not the point. That's not, I don't think I played a 210 combination myself. Okay. I don't think I have, I may have at this point, but I, I, I don't, I don't think I have, uh, this is here because every time you get stuck and you're thinking this all sounds the same, you know how to find something different. Many possibilities is not something to be discouraged about because there is too much to play. It's something to be excited about because there is so much to play. <laughs> you will never finish it. There are always new idea. This is homework for the next five years then. Okay. Because if you combine those 210 possible combinations with all the triad pairs I did in the first part, ooh, okay. Time for training. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's a real train. <laughs> I didn't make it in Photoshop. Time for training. You guys work a few of those combinations up and down. Take it slow okay don't go too fast yes it's a christmas train because with all those combinations i feel always like it's christmas there's also many things to play i'm not gonna get bored i hope it's the same for you of course all these is much much easier if you know more than one position for the same triad all over your guitar neck and you know how to find it and play it at a moment's notice to become really good at doing that and to integrate this skill with all the other skills you already have on your guitar, I do recommend you have a look at the Complete Chord Mastery guitar course. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zilio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!